I want to end the lecture by just raising one more issue. So this is an unadvertised part five. Uh, I want to end by asking a question about intellectual humility that um, maybe doesn't get uh, raised so often, but I think it's a good question. Uh, so one thing that I think uh, is true about the literature is that it's dominated by a question about what makes an individual intellectually virtuous. And the implicit assumption behind that question is a kind of one model fits all assumption. So when you ask, you know, what does a virtuous person look like? The, the implicit assumption maybe is that all virtuous persons are going to look the same. And so, you know, we, we get that in, in uh, virtue ethics as well, where we're, we're asking what does, you know, what does a morally virtuous person look like? And, and we're, we're trying to describe some ideal of a morally virtuous person. Well, we might be looking at a kind of single ideal for an intellectually virtuous person. But suppose we take seriously that we are social beings in the intellectual realm as well as the practical realm, and suppose we take seriously the idea that um, you know much of uh, important intellectual inquiry goes on in the context of uh, uh, teams of inquirers uh, working together. Well, then we might be less concerned about what does a virtuous individual look like and more concerned about what does an individual team look like? What does, uh, what does an, uh, a virtuous intellectual community uh, look like? And once you ask, ask that question, it's very plausible that an intellectually virtuous team is one that is not monolithic in terms of the make of a makeup of its individuals. So it might be that an intellectually virtuous team is going to have uh, uh, quite a variety in the character and in the intellectual virtues of its individual members. So, for example, if you've got a scientific uh, team up and running, you might want some people who are extremely careful about the details and just really that's where you know, they excel, whereas you might want other people who are more creative, who are less risk averse, and are willing to um, uh, float uh, maybe more risky hypotheses. Uh, you want some people who are more timid, some who are more bold, some who are more creative, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is just to raise the question about whether, you know, the assumption that uh, we should really be concerned about the virtue of individuals or, or that we should just be concerned about the vir intellectual virtues of individu individuals, maybe a different perspective might um, make us more concerned about the intellectual virtues of teams or groups working together and open up the possibility that we really don't want everyone to be uh, of the same intellectual character. The, 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 the group might benefit by more variety in the character traits or in the different kinds of excellences that different uh, individuals might possess.